All right, today's lesson is study. Study. I know a lot of time um, when you ask to go over a, a lesson you've read, watch the watch a video, quiet time in your own room. Um, and you pull out your materials to be ready to study. So we're going to learn today the difference between what God means by study and what happens to us when we study. The difference between what God means by study versus when we start to study. So already I think you can kind of hear that study with God and we're going to learn it because you'll see a scripture or the scriptures for it. When we grow up from children and we're taught to study something, either your mom or your dad or some uncle, aunt, friend, somebody taught you or gave you guidance on how to study. And then when you finally go to organized schooling, that teacher gives you a way to study. And all teachers don't give you the same method to study because they go by the method in which they've learned or they think that helps them and fits and they want to pass it on to you. And then even with all that they show you, you start to develop even your own method of study of what seems to work. And, you know, a lot of times you pull out, like I said, study material. In today's, and talking about being Christians now, and in today's study for a Christian, um, maybe we might get into it when we ask questions, but I don't know your method. I don't know your method of study. But Christians now have Christian colleges, or Christian schools, and they developed a method of study. And so when they come out of their schools and go to their churches, they pass that method on. And again, some pick it up and some say, well, I can't study that way. And you still use your method of study. But there are some things that they deem uh, necessary or important. So some of them deem important the Bible in sections, you know, as the Torah and then maybe the prophets and the Psalms and the Proverbs and the songs of Solomon, they call sort of a poetic book. And then you go on with major prophets and minor prophets and, and they developed on which story should go first and how you line them up. And then one of the biggest things is the study of the languages from the Old Testament to the New. The Old Testament, they say, should be studied in Hebrew. And they get that from, I would imagine, that God, when he called Israel, another name by Jacob, and they wind up being in Pharaoh's land. And the whole thing of Moses is that the wives were called uh, Hebrew midwives, or the language that they spoke was a Hebrew language. Now, I could go back real far even to the book of Genesis at the Tower of Babel from one of the great-grandfathers, which name was Heber. 
but but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to get you too much again into the study of man. And then when you get to the New Testament, they say because the language of the world at that time was Greek. And so you not a, a lot of the I don't know how to get this. A lot of the Bibles were written in the Greek language. But again, you've learned a little bit that the Old Testament was written in scrolls first, not in books, not in verses and chapters, um, not in an organized book like you know, like a book. And that the first book that was written, they say was Joel, but I'm not going to go into that. In our Bibles, the first book you turn to is the book of Genesis. And that God gave Moses what to write in our first five books of the Bible, which is the Pentateuch. And I don't know, I do know about it. It's about the power of God how he could give God uh, uh, Moses information on what Adam and Eve was talking about or Cain and Abel when he, he when he killed his brother and and the and the talking of Cain's family when his family was talking about I I've killed me two men to my hurt and I've married me two wives and on and on and on and on you know Moses wasn't there to hear it and then there wasn't a Bible or scrolls left on the ark. It's the power of God. If you, if you don't even write nothing down, I want you to remember this. It's the power of God. And the word power of God, before we get hung up on that, it's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, before we get hung up on that, it's God. So when you look in your Bible, God puts in man's mind the things that he wrote, want, wrote down. And in one of the books of the Bible, in Deuteronomy, he tells you why. He tells Israel, or mankind when we read it that the secret things belong unto the lord our god the revealed things belong unto us and the reason is that we would do the words of the law which would translate to the word of god and to our children and our children's children forever so he gives you the reason for all that he write, all that the Holy Spirit inspired man to write. But study. What does study mean to God? So here we go with the lesson. So I just I just want to do that as just a, a little background. And hopefully when we leave here today, I don't say that everybody's going to get it and how much you get, only God knows. But I hope you know how to study because a lot of you I can even hear from last week are still frustrated in your study and you study this and you study that then all of a sudden you get to the scriptures and being taught and you be like oh I got it wrong again it's because you studied by the will of man versus the will of God so here we go. Second Timothy chapter one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the purpose of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, you know where the study thyself to show yourself approved is. So I had to go back and literally read from the first chapter in 2 Timothy, or what we call now 2 Timothy, because it's a letter. 
It's a letter wrote to Timothy, and you know it's the start of another letter by the beginning parts. People call it a salutation, but the beginning parts that Paul is introducing himself again and, and who he is and who he's writing to. So Paul, apostle, so we know that Paul is an apostle. And he's apostle by the will of God, which means not by the will of man. Verse 2 says, to Timothy. And so now we know who he's writing the letter to. To Timothy, dearly beloved son, grace and mercy. And as you read in other books, not son meaning his actual son, it's son in the Lord. And if he's a son in the Lord, Paul is his father in the Lord or his overseer or one that brought him along in the word because we're going to learn something about Timothy. So grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. So let's see a little bit about the person that the Holy Spirit is writing to, to write to another person. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience. So notice again, he's telling Timothy, I, Paul, thank God whom I serve. I serve God from my forefathers. That means all the ones that were before him that knew the Old Testament. This letter wrote to Timothy is a current thing. In other words, it hadn't been wrote before. It's being wrote now or presented now. So when Paul talks about study, he's talking about the Old Testament. And everything that we see now in our New Testament, it's the same Holy Spirit, the same reason for him giving man the information from the Old Testament, it will line up with the New Testament. They won't be different. Now, they may be different as far as which one brought you along as a schoolmaster to show you what was coming, but it won't be different. In other words, back then, they were under the law of sin and death. Because of Jesus Christ, you're no longer under the law of sin and death. But everything of reasoning is the same. So he goes on to say, without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee and my prayers night and day. So see, he's letting Timothy know, I think about you. Then he says, I am, and this is, now this is in the book of Acts. So we wind up in 2 Timothy first. Why would I go to the book of Acts? Or why would I be in Acts? Because if you remember in Isaiah 28, the word of God is, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, which we're going to talk about later. I am verily a man, which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, yet brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel. So he's telling you, I'm a Jew. So if he's a Jew, what is he studying? The Old Testament or the Jewish writings. And he was brought up at the feet or his father in the Lord was Gamaliel. And Paul is the father of Timothy in the Lord. And he says, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law. That's right, because before he became a Christian, he knew all about the law, the Old Testament books. 
And he says, I knew about the law of the fathers and was zealous towards God. That means he, he was just on fire for learning about God. As ye all, I like this too, as ye all are this day. Now, I'm going to the book of Galatians. I'm going here a little, there a little. He says, and profited in the Jews' religion. See how they seem to fit one verse out of another. He talked about being a Jew in the book of Acts, being taught by Gamaliel, zealous in the law. And then Galatians picks up and says, and profited in the Jews' religion. In other words, he, it was very profitable to his learning, the Jews' religion. And like, listen to this, and, a, and, a, and many of my equals, many of mine equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. So, so all the guys, let's say you in the class and all the people that you learning from, if anybody was more zealous in that class, it was Paul. Then it says in verse 15, he says, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, which he told you that in verse one, it pleased God to do this. And what did God do? To reveal his son in me. So all this stuff he knew about God in the Old Testament, and he knew the law better almost than anybody. All this stuff he learned, it was to eventually reveal Christ in him, which that means he didn't know about Christ with all his studies. Because back then it wasn't to know exactly who the son was, but when the son came, they had all the hints in the Old Testament of who he was, by the things he said, by the things he did. And for Paul, we already know what happened with him. Holy Spirit just led him and he got snatched up and went out in the wilderness with him and Jesus and just sat and learned. How beautiful would that be? If I was to ask each other, one of you now, before we even get to the anybody got any questions thing, that God himself would take you from your earthly mothers and fathers and your earthly teachers and all that you think you knew about God and take you somewhere and him sit with you and teach you his self. A lot of you say, well, I would love that. I would love that. Right now, it's a shame that you don't know that's exactly what he did. The day you got saved, and as you're learning now, and I can say this without being ashamed or afraid, I am your father in the Lord. Whether you are female or a male, you are my sons and daughters in the Lord. Because like Gamaliel, like Paul to Timothy, I'm bringing you along. But I should point you to the one who's actually teaching us all, which is the Holy Spirit. See, we want it to be literally. And in other words, to, to we want to literally go out somewhere and hide and be out there with Jesus and sit and just and eyes closed and wait until we can hear from him. And, and you don't realize, but he's doing it now. You'll see that later. See, and if you believe that, that God has the power to do that, back to the power of God, that his Holy Spirit can do that, that should give you all the confidence in the world that when you study, the perfect one, the Lord himself, is teaching you what to study and how to study it. But, 
we don't we don't we don't do it by God's will. We do it by our own and everything else we learned about study. So we begin to study like ourselves. And you wonder why things are missing or or, or you you're not zealous for the word. You're not on fire for it because you feel empty still. It don't feel good because you don't really feel you're getting anything. Hopefully after this lesson, that will change. Then it says, back to Galatians 1.12. For I, Paul, matter of fact, let me go back to 16. When it pleased God, the bring for the room, the, for Jesus to be revealed in him. And then he says, what's the reason that I might preach him among the heathen? Isn't that the same reason he saved you? Isn't that one of the reasons he still teaches you the word so you can preach him? And then it says that immediately I confirm not with flesh and blood. So for Paul, he didn't go to a, Fer a Pharisee school. No, and I'm going to change that a little bit. He did because we are reading in other books. He was a Pharisee. You know, the Pharisees and scribes. Paul was a Pharisee, but he was a Pharisee who got converted, not stuck to his own ways. And then Galatians 1.12 says, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. And that means if you put them together, it's the same reading. I didn't receive this of man and I wasn't taught it by man. But how was he taught? But by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, if you get the Hebrew and Greek words and go to studying, this revelation means this word in this language and this word in that language, you don't need all that to know that when you're taught, it's God that reveals. But if you want to be puffed up and you want to make man think that you know something, you go into a big dissertation about revelation. You know, like they do with love, agape and a phileo and so and so, so and so, and power, dunamis, and you're going to all those things like you really know something. But the simple man, the one that God wants to make wise, the simple he reads the Bible and see it's of the Holy Spirit that I'm taught. Even though that's Pastor Hackett, my father and the Lord, giving me the information, he's not really my teacher. And I have confidence because of other scriptures that my teacher is the Holy Spirit. I sit at the Lord's feet myself and he reveals to me what he needs me to know and that way again you can't go wrong so that was a little bit about Paul so he's a Jew now let's learn a little, a little bit about, about Timothy Timothy was saved when Paul met him. See, in other words, the gospel wasn't introduced to Timothy by, by Paul. The gospel was, was preached to Timothy by somebody else. But Paul recognized that this man knows the gospel of God. And, and I could say boy, because he was young. And Paul recognized that this man has a gift in God. And later on, they some others got together and laid hands on him. Now, again, before you get too puffed up, that don't mean because they laid hands on him, some kind of power came out of their hands into Timothy, then he knew the gift. 
No, the laying on of hands was just a recognition. They didn't give him nothing. God did. So some churches will make you, when you join them, make you think again that uh, later on, they'll lay hands on you, then you'll get your gift. Doesn't work like that. The power belongs to God. Again, because the power is the Holy Spirit. So let's read a little bit about Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. And notice we're going back to 2 Timothy. It says, when I call to remembrance, this is Paul still talking to Timothy about meeting him and going to give him instruction on what to do. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwell first with or in, and it's things in the way I love it, so let me move it. Which dwelt first in thy grandmother. See, your, your, your faith in God dwelt first in your grandmother. And her name was Lois. And thy mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. In other words, I'm persuaded that it's in you because your grandmother knew Christ, your mother knew Christ, and I'm, so, I'm persuaded that that same knowledge is in you. And when you read about Lois and you read about Eunice, you'll find that they were out when the disciples, after they went to the upper room and they went preaching and doing what they do, that they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And even though they were what they were, they believed it. And the grandmother taught it to the mother and the mother taught it to the son, which was Timothy. Then it says, and that from a child, from a child, that thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. So they taught him when he was very young. From a child, you knew the Holy Scriptures. And you know what they did to you? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So let's look at this again. If Eunice and Lois is listening to the word being preached about Jesus, any word that they knew before hearing that part was the Old Testament. There is no New Testament. And they taught it to Timothy. And now those scriptures had in them who Christ would be. Even if it was the one, you know, and unto us a son is given. You shall call his name Emmanuel. He knew that scripture, but a whole bunch of others. So when Jesus was presented, he didn't go through this thing like the ones who didn't want to believe. Well, we don't need him. We had Moses. And Abraham was our father. Because you know what Jesus told him. Had Abraham been your father, then you'd have believed in me. Because that's who he spoke about. So with Timothy, Timothy was a believer. The scriptures of the Old Testament made him wise unto, wise unto salvation. So then when you look at, at, at this part, notice that when you get to him learning about Jesus, I'm going back to 2 Timothy 1. And the reason for him to study, and I'm going to say two things that is the most part of your lesson. The reason the Holy Ghost gave Timothy to study or when he studied, he studied what? Now, most of you, you've been listening to the lesson, should have said right off, he studied the, the Old Testament. 
That's right. The Old Testament from his grandmother and mother made him wise unto salvation. And he studied what and he studied how. That's what you need to know when you study. You need to know the what and you need to know the how. And pretty soon as we keep reading, we're going to learn by the precept of God, what does the word study actually mean? Do it mean how you've learned to study or does it mean something else? And you know how some people take the word and they'll say that script, that scripture don't mean that, it means this, or that word don't mean that, it means this, especially with Hebrew and Greek. The Bible, remember, the Holy Spirit reveals itself. So if the word study don't exactly mean study, there will be a scripture somewhere to tell you what study means. That's your line upon line. That's your here a little, there a little. So if I was to tell you that study don't mean study, you could easily say, Pastor Hackett, what makes you right? It say the word study, so I won't take it that it means study. Until one day with that statement made to you that study don't mean study, you come across a scripture and be like, oops, if I only knew this scripture, I would have knew that that was true. Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Thou therefore, my son... Remember, Paul still talking to him. Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And strong in the grace is you've learned that you're not saved by works. You've learned that the grace of God is how a man is saved by faith in that grace. And I'm not even going to go into, you've heard it. Grace is unmerited favor. So somebody said that to you, you picked it up. You think again, you really know what it means to the point that whenever grace is talked about, that's exactly what you say. It's unmerited favor. Then the next verse says, and the things that thou hast heard. In other words, be strong in the grace of Christ and the things which thou have heard of me. In other words, Paul said, whatever you heard me teach you, stay strong in that. And then it says, among many witnesses, the same, co the same commit thou to faithful men. So now you know what Timothy's gift is. It's whatever, kind of what Paul's is. Timothy is going to be a teacher. And going to means he already has it. So now, because one of the reasons Paul is teaching him or bringing him along is that he would teach other faithful men. And I like the next part. Who shall be able to teach? Others. Men, you men that's listening out there, you see this, it's from one man to another man, and it just keeps going to another man to another man. Now, I wish I could go over one day, be fruitful and multiply. And you find out it ain't got nothing to do so much with sex, even though God used it. So I want you to stay strong do what you learned of me among many witnesses and, and commit yourself or commit the same to faithful men. Teach faithful men. I said faithful men. And they shall be able to teach others. Then it says, 2 Timothy 2.14, of these things, put them in remembrance. See, there's a lot of verses in between but those verses for this lesson 
is not necessary. So some of you, you get a lesson and you say, I'm going to go back from the beginning. And now you're trying to figure out what every verse meant. And the Lord wasn't talking to your spirit about every verse. Right now, you're trying to learn how to study. Right now, your father in the Lord is giving you instruction on what it takes to study and to understand what it me means and what you're going to study and how you should study it. And I'm doing that based on what I've learned from the Lord. So even if you say sometimes, well, we don't know the word like you, Pastor Hackett, and it's so-and-so, and then you go away and you go study the way you know. And if you say, I don't know the word like you, that means somewhere in your mind you're saying, I wish I knew it like you. But not so much like me. That's what you think right now. But know it how the spirit reveals to you. So you're able to commit to faithful men and women and that you're able to teach them so they teach others. See, some of you already have learned a bunch of nonsense and junk. And if you right now just really getting some of this, guess what you've already done to your children? Fathers who may be faithful in the Lord. It's hard to find. And if you have been teaching your sons and daughters, what have you been teaching them all this time? Mothers who are trying to guide your family and your sons and your daughters. And, and, and you wonder why your sons and daughters are confused after they get out amongst other Christians. And it don't seem, and then you want them to be just like you still the church or the denomination that you go to. And you still teaching them the will of man. And because you don't know yet, that means you think you're right. And you're actually teaching them what you still don't know or not teaching them. So the next verse says, of these things, of these things, put them in remembrance. He's telling Timothy, of the things you learn, committed to faithful men, so men will be able to teach others, put them in remembrance. You know how my friend said at that time, is this all you teach? Yes, and that's all I'll teach for until I die. Because that's what I've been given to do. I don't know what you've been given to teach out of the scripture and how, according to the measure that's given you, how you do it. That's why I don't try to be like me. You can learn what I've learned, but don't try to be like me. Because you think again that I've got all this time to study and those who've been knowing me 20 or 30 years, yeah, well, really? And because again, I've studied so much in the beginning and I built up so much in the beginning the study isn't the same as it is now. Now, some of it is study and some of it is work. In the beginning, I had no business trying to work when I haven't really studied. Everybody want to study a lesson, then you jump into being a teacher and you run and tell your sister and your auntie and your kids and you want to tell them what you learn as though you think you know. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers or but to the good of the hearer. And I like this. A lot of us still argue about words and 
this thing and that thing. And I'm supposed to charge you that you don't do that. But I like this. Right after this, the scripture study to show thyself approved. Now remember who's talking to who. Paul is talking to Timothy on how to use the gift that's in him. And he tells him that he's going to teach others. Study to show thyself approved. They don't have a New Testament to study with. They're going to study the same Old Testament scriptures as Timothy that made him wise unto salvation. The same Old Testament scriptures that brought Paul into the knowledge of who Christ was. And how to walk in him. Y'all don't know how beautiful the, the new Christian after Christ came and died has it. That we know now who we hear from. Some of them just had to trust that they was hearing from God, from the other prophets. But for you and I, we have even him leaving Jesus and the promise of him coming to teach us. So you study to show yourself approved unto God. For me and you, we got all of it. Not just the Old Testament. We've got all of it. We have the conclusion. Christ has died. The gifts that was in the Old Testament, he has given to men in this time that even who he was didn't know that mystery. It was given to us to preach to one another. So study to show that prove, approved unto God. And you're going to see some of the scriptures. Not approved to man, unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed. A workman, work doing what? Work preaching the gospel. Work that stirred up the gift that's in you to help teach your sons and your daughters. A workman that needeth not be ashamed and rightly dividing, rightly, that, 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 that rightly means legally, that means by the way of God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And you know that in Hebrews 5, when you are meat eater instead of milk, it's because you can discern the difference between good and evil. You know the difference between whether it's a truth or a lie. Second Corinthians. Now notice what's happening. Because we're listening to Paul teach Timothy. And now we have it all. I'm going to 2 Corinthians, which is now written for you and our, my sake. And look what this verse says. For not he that commendeth himself is approved. See, you read in Timothy that show yourself approved unto God. A person that commends themselves For not he that commendeth himself is approved, approved of God. The next part says, but whom the Lord commendeth. See, in other words, you want yourself approved by God. You don't, you don't have to go get your degrees and do all that to look good in my sight. You don't have to uh, uh, a study trying to uh, uh, for me to approve you. You want to do it God's way. 
So let's go down here. Sorry. Now, back to Timothy. Now, the Spirit speaks expressingly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils or the teaching of devils, which you were born with. But notice this. Who speaks expressly? The Spirit. He's speaking to us. Don't give heed to seducing spirits. Let me see what a seducing spirit could be. I'm going to get my master's and then my doctorate so that when I see you or you see me amongst Christian men, you call me doctor. And that's supposed to mean I'm approved by you now because the word doctrine tells me I'm higher up in echelon. But what you don't realize, again, you might be higher up in the eyes of man, but it's not approved by God. He never asked you to do that. He wants you to get the same one that teaches you, the spirit. Now, I didn't put it in here, but you could go to 1 Timothy uh, uh, 2, 27, and whatever that is that tells you concerning him that will seduce you. You need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing or the same Holy Spirit that teaches you is the truth and no lie. But when we give in to that, somebody convinces you that you got to go to some Bible college before you can hear from God. Those people are sitting at their own feet. And the doctrines which they learn is of devils. God never told you to change the word fear to disaster. God never told you he has a plan for your life. And I, you could go on and on and on and on. That same chapter, and we pass, bypass the other parts, going to this part, because I could have gave you about bodily exercise, profit of little, or you can eat anything that's offered with of thanksgiving and prayer, but that ain't for you. You're just learning how to study. So now Paul tells Timothy in a first letter to Timothy, not a second letter, but a first letter. He tells him, if thou put the brethren in remembrance, remember again, is that all you teach? If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, what things? All the things that were in between verse 1 to verse 6 about seducing spirits, about doctrines of devils. If you put the brother in remembrance of these things, and as we continue to learn, there's a whole lot of other things taught to Paul that he reminds the brethren of. But if you put them in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister. Of Jesus Christ. What I what I say, you shall be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you're not trying to be approved by man and you're not trying to be approved by self. You're teaching the precept and the word of God the way He wants you to. And you esteem God's precept right above all things. And if you put them in remembrance, not to be puffed up on how much they have, a thing that gain is godliness, and on and on. You shall be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. Not doctrines of devil, good doctrine. Whereunto thou hast attained, or you have learned from me. Verse 7, 
but but refuse. We're reading the same thing that we read in 2 Timothy, but refuse profane and old wives' tables and fables. And exercise thyself rather unto godliness. 1 Timothy 4, 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading. I, will, I would hope that the light would turn on right now. And maybe it hasn't. So my job is to keep teaching. I, I can't do much about what you're getting and not getting. I'm not God. I don't know if you're not getting it through disobedience. I don't know if you're not getting it because it's not time for you to know yet. But I do know this. Paul told Timothy, you give attendance or keep doing what you're doing and attend unto reading. The word reading is the word study. You know, again, how people tell you, uh, you tell a new Christian, well, you should start in John. So where in the Bible did God tell you to tell them to start in John? That's a theological thing that people say, and they pick that up from somewhere else, and now they repeat it without even thinking about it. Well, if you're going to start in your Bible, start in John. And the reason people want people to start there because that goes where in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word became flesh and so on and so on. If they say they already believe that. Now they might come back later and read that scripture to strengthen their faith in what they believe. But, but you could go anywhere in your Bible and read. and read and study because in your reading who's the revealer and now your faith is in God not where you think you start give it give attendance to reading exhortation and doctrine. In other words, you keep studying what I'm telling you. Study this letter that I'm currently writing unto you and study the scriptures that brought you to where you are. So coming to the end, when you do begin to read, or to study, have a readiness of mind. Don't despise prophecy. And I ain't talking about prophecy like you're going to get a new car next week. Because remember, the spirit of prophecy is the Lord. That's who everything was about. You've already been convinced that people who are prophets is going to tell you something good that's going to happen in your life. Have a readiness of mind and search the scriptures. Search through, study through, read through with your confidence in the Lord is the revealer. And in your looking in the scripture, if for some reason you search through five, nine, 15 scriptures, but you only seem to get something out of one of them, praise God. But you got Bible study next week and you're supposed to teach the children. You're supposed to teach the young adults. And you're supposed to teach the old people and you're supposed to, and you got to be ready with this lesson. So I need to study. And you don't even understand what study means. 
And I said, I would say this, even when you see line upon line, do you really know what that means? And if not, have you asked God? Here a little, there a little. Do you really understand what that means? And I know precept upon precept. Because the precept will be God's will. The precept will be the conclusion of all that you will study. But one conclusion leads to another conclusion. For the folks in the Old Testament, the conclusion was all that they knew. But another conclusion was open to you and I. But it was always in the Old Testament. Ask Timothy, ask Lois, ask Eunice. So it says, seest that thou a man wise in his own conceit. That's back to a man that approve himself. See a man wise in his own conceit. There is more hope in a for a fool than of him. Because that man isn't getting what he gets from God. When, he, when he's wise in his own conceit. And wise in your own conceit means you also got that same conceit from others. So in Isaiah says, woe unto him that are wise in his own eyes and prudent in his own sight. Proverbs 1.5 says, a wise man will hear. That's a beautiful scripture. I, I see some of you do that. I hear some of you do that. You're so busy talking as though you know. You can't hear anything. You haven't listened yet. Why? Because you're prudent in your own sight. You think you know. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall attend unto wise counsels. Wise counsels. Men that have been proven, men that know the word, faithful men, and they're able to share it with others. Some of you are so in a hurry to learn a lesson, and if you got a disobedient husband or a disobedient wife, you're so in a hurry to run back to them, to throw those scriptures on them as though you know them and you don't even understand them yourself. A person that listens, a person that the Lord is able to guide, a person that trusts in the power of God and in his word, that person, as wrote in Psalms by the same Holy Spirit, I have more understanding than all my teachers. You don't, you don't know. You don't know. I long for those days that when I'm talking to somebody in the Lord or somebody I know have been brought along in the Lord, I'm waiting to hear that when you talk, that my ears go up and say, wow. And God has revealed that part of his word to them. And that you understand even as you read because, or even as you read slash study, because you have did that yourself. You didn't wait for the teacher to do it for you. You went and said, I am zealous for understanding God. I, I, I am on fire for understanding God and I'm going to read. 
And I'm going to read with quietness. I'm going to read as though I don't know anything because I don't. And I'm listening for the one who is my teacher, the spirit of God. And then it says, for the testimonies are my meditation. I, I have more understanding than all my teachers. And for thy testimonies, sorry, for thy testimonies are my meditation. In other words, I'm meditation, I'm meditating on what you said. So verse 100 says, I understand more than the ancients. That means forefathers, those that were before me. I have more understanding than the ancients because I kept thy precepts. I kept thy conclusions. I kept thy uh, summation of all of what this word means. And nine out of 10, that precept is going to lead you to let the word study you, let the word cut you sharp as a two-edged sword. Let the word do that. You know that was in the last song I played. And this, this pain I'm going through is necessary because it's the thing that causes change. And I'm not going to deny your word when it tells me I'm full of pride. I'm not going to deny your word when it tells you I'm uplifted in my own understanding and in myself. So when wise counsel reads to you what something really means and you defend yourself immediately like that ain't me. And that's not what I meant. And the word says, well, yes, you did mean that. Then it says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Now notice, I went from Psalms and I'm back to Acts. Because what we're trying to learn, to have a readiness of mind and search the scriptures. And search the scriptures don't mean have your head full of your own thoughts. It means to listen to the Lord. So, so, but I'm going to search you and you know what search means. So in the book of Acts, God gives us an example by his Holy Spirit about doing this. These were more noble than they in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. This is the Bereans. You know, you hear this story in church, but you still don't ever hear what is for and read. You just, it's like puffed up like the Bereans. But these Bereans had a readiness of mind. And what did they do? And searched the scriptures daily. That's not a new thought. When, when, when David or Solomon or a king became king, one of the, the things were that he would have the Bible read to him each day or the scrolls. Or the covenant. And any person that was in charge should have the scriptures read to them daily. And you and I know that by itself don't make you change. You you know about David. Hands so bloody he couldn't build God's house. You know about Solomon marrying over seven hundred got seven hundred wives and concubines and, and and then when they would when they serving this God, he goes serve that one and serving this God, he's with that one. And God told him they're gonna take your heart from me. And he was in denial. 
but the but the Bereans, the Bereans were more noble than they in Thessalonica, which means those that's in Thessalonica must have been noble folk, but not as noble as these other folks who had a readiness of mind and they searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So back to Proverbs, and we're really coming to the end. Back to Proverbs, and remember, what and how? What and how? So back to Proverbs, my son, my daughter, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, if you will do this, so that thou incline thine ear, here we go again, unto wisdom. And applying thine heart to understanding. I, I don't know how many times I've taught this and said it. When you walk, and I hear in our prayers and everything, you know, um, uh, I'm going I'm to apply the word to my life. The Bible doesn't tell. There's only one scripture that talks about what the word should be applied to. And listen to it one more time. Incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart or apply yourself to understanding. You just don't pick situations in life and try to apply the word to it. You apply yourself to the word. Whatever the word says, you should pray. Whatever the word, that's why we walk around talking about stuff like, I don't receive that and so-and-so, so-and-so. Because of our ignorance and we heard others say it, you really think that's a thing to say? And when you literally say, I don't receive that, you know who you're telling that to, right? The God that allowed the trying of your faith, the, the God that allowed what we go through, you telling God, oh, I don't receive that. Really? So again, somebody to convince you that the devil is the author of sickness. So when you get ready to get sick, you say, I don't receive that. And you know what's deep? Let's say, first of all, the worst that can happen is that you don't get sick and you think it worked. But what's going to happen to the day when it's time for you to leave this earth? Or what's going to happen to the day that you're about to get sick and you say, I don't receive that and you get sick anyway? What happened? Just because it never was in your scripture. You don't apply scripture like that to life. You apply yourself to scripture. So I would charge you, read your word and see what the word says when we become ill and what you should say and what you should do. And here we go. Right now, some of you are saying, Oh, I, I don't, you're saying it again. I, I don't receive that. I, I don't, because I don't hear it that way. That's because it's your own conceit. I just read you a scripture that you apply your heart to God. That's who understanding is. You go read Proverbs 8 and find out. I am understanding. I am wisdom. They sound like words. They're not words. They're what God is. And let me show you what happens after that. Remember, we're looking at the what and how. Be, be ready. Be ready to have a readiness of mind. And already with that, uh, I don't receive that thing. Your mind ain't ready to hear the truth that you just read. Then the next verse says in verse five, if thou seekest her as silver, where did her come from?
It's what you just read. Her is understanding. Her is knowledge. Her is understanding, wisdom, knowledge. And when you look at the when you look at the third one, and we're gonna read her is just means God's care for. If I seek God's word as silver and searches for her, like the Bereans, the example the Holy Spirit showed, if I search for her as for hid treasure, that's the diligence to seek. Don't go on some deep study about searching for treasures and searching for is are you understanding the whole precept is for me to hear what and how and if i search for it this way because that's what he told me verse five is the most beautiful verse without all in all the bible you're gonna find for study t h E N. Then, then what? If you apply yourself to understanding, if you cry after knowledge, if you lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver, if you search for her as treasure, if you incline your ear and apply your heart then shalt I understand the fear of the Lord. Let's stop there. What's the beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. What's the beginning of knowledge? Fear of the Lord. What's the beginning of understanding? The fear of the Lord. Because by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. You don't try to do things your own way. You do it the Lord's way. If you, if you do these things, you're going to find the fear of the Lord. The reason or precept why you should do this. Because if you don't, if you don't, you won't receive nothing from God. But if you find the fear of the Lord, look what comes next. All that you've been looking for. Thou shalt, thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Yes, pastor, that's what I want. I want the knowledge of God. You can find it but it's hid in the obedience to search. It's hid in the obedience to climb your ear. Get out of yourself. That's what it's hid in. Because once you realize it's hid in those things, you will be fearful not to do it that way. And then you will find the knowledge of God. So if any man lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Faith of what? The way he told you to. Believing that if I do what he told me to, and I find the fear of God, I'll find the knowledge of God. Let him ask in faith. Let him search like the Bereans. Let him search with a readiness of mind. Let him study that way. Let him read that way. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. That's why Paul taught Timothy, stay steadfast in what you learn. Don't waver from it. And I could go to all those other scriptures about 
reprove, rebuke with all long suffering. Let no man despise thee. You're a young person. I'm going to leave you here, Timothy, in this place that you're, I'm going somewhere else, but this is what I want you to teach when you're there. You're going to have people talk about you're too young to teach them. You're going to have people not wanting to hear the truth, but turn their mind to fables and arguments and crazy things. Stay steadfast. He that wavereth, he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss. You will literally believe anything. That's right. You know, one week you can hear the truth and then you go over to class number B and they say something and that one sounds better. Then you got your mind filled up with all this over here and that one sounds better. And you toss to and fro, to and fro because you're not looking to study what the word is for. You're not willing to read what the word is for. You're looking for your own will again. This is the reason for knowing the word. And this is the last scripture. Now you already heard it from me in Deuteronomy. And I know you don't remember everything. You know, Deuteronomy, what tells you again, the secret thing belongs to the Lord our God. The revealed thing belongs on us and to our children that they may do it. Da, da, da. But that member, that's one line in the Bible. And remember, everything that's in your Old Testament for you and I is also in your New Testament because that's all you're reading. But don't try to read the Old Testament without the New Testament because back then they knew God, but they didn't know Christ. That's where we get in trouble. So this is the reason for knowing the word. Second Peter 1.12. Wherefore, I will not neglect to put you always in remembrance. Now, you heard Paul tell Timothy to do that. You and Now you're seeing the same thing, but in Peter. But remember, the same Jesus that taught Paul was taught Jesus, I mean, taught Peter when he walked with Jesus. And we're going to go through that order as I go to the screen about sharing. The reason for knowing. Now, look at this. This is 2 Peter 1.12. Notice I got 2 Peter 1.15. That ain't in order. Because when you read line upon line, precept upon precept, it don't mean that the next line is going to be in the order of your study. And that's what we do. That's why I sometimes still hear some of y'all say, well, read a little above it and read a little below it. Don't always count on that. So now you're saying again, it ain't the spirit that gives you revelation. It's that you know how to go above and below. And like, bam, you're going to hear the answer. But today you should know better. Search for it. Have a ready heart, ready mind. Learn the fear of the Lord. Then you'll find the knowledge of God. Not I go up here and I go down here. Not I go get this the source and that's the source. Not I go get the, this commentary and that commentary. Not I go get this. Not I go to school to learn this and learn that. Because now you're telling God, we have a better way of figuring out what your word means through our word study. So reason for knowing the word, wherefore I would not neglect to, to put you always in remembrance of these things or of these, which you read in Timothy. Now look at verse 15, which is not in order. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease 
to have these things always in remembrance. And I told my wife, I didn't even talk to her with this about what was at the end of this lesson and why. I even told some, don't get disturbed when you read this. But you have to know this. Okay, so God let us run into one another. And you're learning the word, amen. And, and pretty soon you sort of really learn who your teacher so you ain't dependent so much on me, even though, again, I'm supposed to do my my thing in Christ according to my gift, and then you listen according to your gift. But notice what Timothy is telling them. One of the reasons I'm putting you in remembrance is so you can remember these things that we go over. And another reason is I'm not going to always be here with you. And that's why he says that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. See, in other words, if if the, the Lord have his will goes, some of you may die before me, but I might die before a lot of you. And then all of a sudden you lost again on well, what I'm going to do now. And I had a, uh, I thought I was a good teacher then. And now I have to find out where to go and what to hear and what to do. So my job is to keep your remembrance of the things that you're learning so that one day when I do die or I am deceased, you are in remembrance of the things that you've learned. Showing you again, God don't want you to depend always on the human being before you. All right, we're going to open it up. All right, again, a lot, but you got what you got. Another got what they have. You heard what you heard. Some of you might not feel you heard nothing. Thank God again for video. You can go back over it. Thank God for the written word. You can go back over it. But if you have trouble going over it, and then your earthly father, earthly teacher, father in the Lord, not father like father Catholic priest. which is the reason why a little bitty teeny of that is true, but not the way they have it. So again, it's open. God bless you. I will mute my mic and get out your way. And it's on you statements, questions. Oh, I didn't understand this part, but I understand that part. I still don't know what study means. <laughs> study means just to read. Don't it don't mean study like by the will of man. Just to read, and now you're already obeying God by searching. And then let the spirit do what it was left here to do. Oh, I said I would tell you this order. The father that taught the son was Jesus. So God taught his son. And then when the Holy Spirit came, Jesus taught the Holy Spirit what it should say and teach. The Holy Spirit teaches the earthly man that he gave the gift to be an overseer to teach in. And he teach the person who's human teaches, teaches you that you may teach others. And that it continues in that manner. And see, again, I know what you're saying, because don't separate them, though. Whether it's Jesus, God, or the Holy Spirit, it's all God. It's just, again, he's teaching you that with even within himself, there's an order on how he did this. And this is the order he won't kept. And when the Holy Spirit, John 16, if you ever want to go there, when the Holy Spirit comes, it will teach you everything that Jesus tells it, and it would only say or do. And it will not speak of itself, because that's not what the Spirit is here for. It's here to teach you Jesus. And Jesus over and over taught us 
I'm here to show you the Father. Or when we all were one, we all were God. We all were God and always will be. Remember, that's the power of God to be in a zillion places at once. Don't shorten the power of God. Then you don't believe he can teach you. All right, it's open. And by Where the way, I'm oh, sorry, but let me do this. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers that's out there, either on this Zoom or will listen later on this day of May 12th. Happy Mother's Day to you, and God bless you for your mothership that he has given you. So praise God. All right, I'm sorry, brother. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Yes, uh, praise the Lord to all the moms. Um, praise God for the uh, beautiful message that uh, was spoken through yourself. And I'm thanking God that I'm learning uh, to not use the uh, principles that I've learned of uh, how to study um, toward the Bible, even though that has just only been a couple of years of uh, not using those principles. And yet I've used those principles. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh, man. Oh, gosh. For many years, oh, over 20, man. And uh, not uh, understanding because I wasn't hearing uh, anyone else uh, sharing what I've heard uh, this evening in reference to uh, the meaning of uh, studying and things like that. So just thank God. I really am thanking God more and more uh, each week uh, to know that is 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 not about um, uh, things pertaining to man in reference to education, knowledge by man. Uh, achievements, accomplishments, or even receiving accolades by man. It's not about that yet. <laughs> I'm not going to take that away from anyone because this is a lot of people's upbringing, especially those who, you know, um, fall under maybe what one would consider, you know, um, uh, success from an individual or maybe their parents you know, became, you know, um, successful um, in what, they may think or deem successful to to be, but in, in reference to how we may look at, you know, those that are on TV, those that have made pro, uh, pro, pro sports, you know, uh, all, all of that, but that's recognition from, from man. And I am so happy now that within the last past uh, couple of few years, I'm able now to begin to separate those accolades from God. God is... God, God is totally different. Um, he tells us to love those who persecute you and hate you. You know, you don't hear. I wasn't learning that when I was coming up. Oh no, you you kick that person. You know what? Uh, he uh, uh, he's gonna disrespect you or come up against you or not showing love to you. I ain't giving him nothing. I don't know. I'm not gonna do this or get that. You know, <clears throat> I'm finding more and more that as I read the scriptures, that the life with the Lord is totally opposite. It is. Yes, it is. Of the upbringing and the life of uh, mankind. So I'm just thankful that I'm beginning now to recognize that and I'm able more as time to, you know, more as time goes on to separate <clears throat> that with, 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 with the understanding. It would only confuse me more about what God is trying to explain to me. Praise God, that was all. Amen. It's still open. Hi, everybody. Um, happy Mother's Day to you guys, to the ladies. Um, you know what I want to say is... Um, Old school uh, Christians 
I recall my grandfather going to church and he was the only one in our house that ever went. And uh, he read every night and went to sleep. And I don't recall even when I finally start going to church, I think I went to Catholic church and nowhere did, you know, where you were encouraged to read the Bible. It was kind of like you went to church to hear the preacher present something to you. But nowadays, <laughs> You got preaching all over the internet, all over YouTube. Everybody got a blog. They got short. You know, I mean, even the websites um, that I use for work, uh, for job search. You got preachers on the, the job search website with sharing. So now everybody's teaching. And and on a positive note, it, I I my prayer and my hope is that that everybody's reading and the Holy Spirit's teaching them. But at one time, uh, nobody really uh, had a hunger or, or, or just an interest in reading the Bible. It was you sitting there being fed, you know, what, what somebody else got. So I, I like that. Um, there's a lot of people that are, that are actually reading. Um, and one thing I learned today, just I never thought of the fact that um, when they say study the word, study the word, study your word, study your word, it's just reading the Bible. You know, I, at one point I, um, I wanted to just dig into certain subjects and get a bunch of books and a, and a bunch of commentaries and a bunch of just stuff on one particular subject. And the Holy Spirit will, will, will reveal to you what he wants you to know. And there's things down inside of you that'll spring up and just flow right out of you that you didn't even know you had inside, that you hadn't even thought that you had memory for. And that's just the freedom of the Holy Spirit to, to flow through you and use you. And that's such a gift. That's my point. Thank you. Amen. Still open. All right, I ain't going to keep you. Um, that was good um, when she said, um, you know, study is just reading the Bible. Not, not you can see already, it's just reading the Bible, trusting the spirit, not I'm going to study. And, and like you said, you, you get a subject and or you read a word and you go on your little tangent and, and it'd be stuff simple like, you know, and the Lord will show you, you know, you know you're about to have an attitude this evening. So let me let me show you about attitudes. And you just pass that back as you already had in your uh, mind to study. You know, so some people, I was saying earlier, some people uh, read the Bible and get tired and go to sleep because, you know, these this or uh, or they got a certain time they're going to do this or that at, and which is almost like making a vow to God in your heart that you can't keep, you know. So it's, again, you're telling God the method, you know. But um, so it's it's still open, and I'm gonna do this for about two minutes, and if we don't get nobody, we gonna close in prayer. Uh, thank God for everybody that's listening. Because it's the, a big, big part of it. And the more you listen and learn, you the more you learn how to hear. That's where you get that part from. And how you, how you know you hear from God? Stay in His Word. Stay in His Word, and and it's kind of it's simple. Stay in His Word. That way, when He speaks, it's already in a, in a word. And if you've been diligent. To do like he said, how you're studying it, you know, you're searching the word. You're just searching the word, not knowing really what he's gonna show. All of a sudden, he speak to you, and you know that you've seen that. You know, he gave you the testimony of of the of a written word, 
which was inspired by the word himself. Okay, so uh, two minutes and we're going to close. So you go enjoy your your Mother's Day and your Mother's Day uh, uh, dinner or whatever you got going on. I'm sorry, that was a that was a preacher's two minutes. <laughs> that would could mean less or more. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna close in prayer. So um go back over your go back over your scriptures. You know, search through them. And um go back over the video in case of some things there that you heard something but you can't quite remember. Yeah. So, so Jay, go ahead and close in prayer. To our Lord and Savior, we give you high praise and we thank you for another day. Thank you for your saving grace. Thank you for the opportunity to read your word, God. Thank you for everybody on the call. Thank you for being our burden bearer and the Savior of our souls. We ask, oh Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would just Reveal to us who to share your love with, God. We ask that you would just open our mouths and allow us to share testimonies of your goodness and where you brought us from to some. You might cut off, Gene. All right, maybe your mic went off. Uh, phone could have went dead. Well, uh, so anyway, um, I like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day out there. And everybody enjoy, and you guys have a blessed week. And deuces. All right, where to close it, Brother Gary? <laughs> all right, God bless you all, and Lord willing, uh, see you next week. Amen.